course Hornaday shows up first. Greetings, you two BM buddies. This is Ultimate 23 Dragon, and welcome to the NASCAR Hall of Fame special. Since I'm off today, and I didn't have anything to do since I had to house it, thanks, Mom and Dad. Let's figure out who's going into the Hall of Fame for the 2018 class for NASCAR. Now, for those who don't know, five people get in per Hall of Fame class, and among the five nominees, I made my picks. The ones that I think will get in, for sure, at the very least, Buddy Baker, Ken Squire, Alan Kowicki, Bobby Labonte, and the last one I'm torn between Roger Penske and Robert Yates. So, let's have some fun with this one. Let's figure out who gets into the Hall of Fame this year. Yeah, they do, and that's what's great about this. The process. Uh, I'm using the NASCAR the America feed for this. At the cup level. It's, it's I don't think Race Hub's doing it directly. NASCAR, I think they're just going to try and cup, uh, which do the announcement one at a time from their studio. Because uh, I checked on it before I switched back to NASCAR America, to the, the NASCAR Race Hub people are at their studio. Meanwhile, you got Chris DeVoto, Jeff Bird, and Mark Martin representing NASCAR America at the ceremony. Let's do this thing. For a moment, that moment, and that wait about to happen. Let's turn things over to the managing director of racing communications, Kurt Colbert. Maybe I should turn it up a bit. Welcome, everyone, and thank you for joining us this evening Ralph, at the NASCAR Hall of Fame here in Uptown Charlotte. This is a very exciting day for NASCAR as we announce those who will comprise. The NASCAR Hall of Fame. So they just bought the list on the right side of the screen, is that right? We also will award the 2018 Landmark Award. Oh, the nominees, contributions okay. Contributions to NASCAR. Earlier today, in a closed session at the Charlotte Convention Center, the NASCAR Hall of Fame voting panel reviewed, discussed, selected, and no doubt debated the five new members of the NASCAR Hall of Fame. And for the second time in history of the NASCAR Hall of Fame, uh -oh. we had a tie for the fifth and final spot in the NASCAR Hall of Fame class of 2018. Just like my list. As you can see on stage, the accounting firm EY tabulated the ballots and it placed five envelopes which contain the names of the NASCAR Hall of Fame class of 2018. Those names will be announced shortly. But before that, We'd like to thank the voting panel, which spent a great deal of time and energy reviewing material and discussing to everything together today. We'd also like to thank our broadcast partners for carrying tonight's historic announcement live. NBCSN, Sirius XM NASCAR Radio, MRN, NASCAR.com, and Facebook Live. We appreciate their continued support and we hope our passionate fans enjoy tonight's announcement. It's one they certainly had a hand in. As has been the case since the NASCAR Hall of Fame opened, the fans' collective voice was heard by a NASCAR.com NASCAR Hall of Fame fan vote. Their ballot counted as one of the 54 ballots cast today. We thank our loyal fans for all of their votes. And finally, here in front of me now, We'd like to welcome all of the NASCAR Hall of Famers who are in attendance, along with the families and current nominees. Without further ado, to introduce the winner of the 2018 Landmark Award and the NASCAR Hall of Fame Class of 2018, please welcome NASCAR Vice Chairman Mike Helton. Well, this ain't Ryan Cran, so that helps. The other guy. Thank you, Kurt. The uh, Landmark Award gives us the opportunity to put into the Hall of Fame a person who contributed to the sport. It may not be quite as famous as those that come out of the victory lane, but their contribution is certainly is important. It's either going to be Jim France. So the 2018 Jeffrey. Landmark Award is Jim France. Called it. Jim France grew up in the early years of stock cars. Living and learning every detail oh, now of the it sport gets loud. alongside his father, Bill France Sr. and brother, Bill France Jr. Joining so he's Bill France Jr.'s brother, all right? 
France worked in all phases of operations in his early years with the company, working to expand and improve the business of racing. He was elected to the ISC board in 1970 and has served in more than a half dozen executive positions, including his current role of chairman. But job titles or positions mattered little to France throughout his extraordinary career. For France, the bottom line was this, the health and well-being of a sport that was literally in his blood. Tirelessly working behind the scenes, France has played a major leadership role in making critical decisions that continue to shape the motorsports community. His humility cannot hide his impactful work in shaping the sport. In 1999, he founded Grand Am Road Racing. In 2012, he was the driving force behind the merger of Grand Am and the American Le Mans series into IMSA, North America's premier sports car series. France helped lead the Daytona Rising Project, a $400 million renovation that made Daytona International Speedway the world's first motorsports stadium. France's vision debuted in 2016 and has revolutionized the fan experience. But still. Congratulations, Jim. Now let's move on to the 2018 class for the next And once again, the volume goes back down. Our first in name is uh, uh, an individual whose <laughs> character I think he's defines NASCAR. His success and contributions will be realized for generations to come in this sport. Robert Yates. Robert Yates has proved that hard work, true grit, and a quest for excellence will lead to success in that sport. The going to go up and Put down. Put an engine in front of Yates, <laughs> and he could create horsepower. His career started by sweeping the floors at home in Moody Racing, and quickly became an engine-building genius, assembling winning engines for NASCAR's greatest drivers, including Hall of Fame drivers Bobby Allison, Cale Yarbrough, and Darrell Waltrip. In 1988, with the urging of young driver Davey Allison, Yates sold everything he owned to purchase the struggling Winnier Racing. As a car owner, Yates Racing won his first race in 1989 at Talladega with Davey Ellison in the driver's seat. Together, they would go on to win 15 of Yates' 57 career wins as an owner in NASCAR's elite division. Eventually, Hall of Fame driver Dale Jarrett joined Yates Racing as they expanded into a two-car team. The team of Jarrett and Yates would win 29 NASCAR Cup races including two Daytona 500s and two Brickyard 400s. In 1999, they captured the crown jewel in NASCAR's elite racing by winning the championship. From his humble beginnings, Robert Yates reached the upper echelon of NASCAR racing as an innovator in engine building and as a car owner, embedding his name into the history books. hopeful he would get in because they're not sure how long he has because of his health issues. Our next team member will forever be our first champion, Red Baron. Red Baron, okay, Red. I say Red Baron, that. Robert Red Byron was a World War II hero and racing pioneer who overcame a shattered left leg suffered during the war and made NASCAR history by becoming the first champion in 1948 and 49. He approached it from a, a from a little higher plane than than most of the drivers there, trying to analyze uh, how everything was going to work. Along with car builder Red Vote and owner Raymond Parks, Red Byron was integral in reinventing the concept of a racing team. Hilton <laughs> just stood there. Our next team member raised the high bar from the top of the box, Ray Everham. Oh! That's a stunner! I didn't think Everham would get in this year. season finale in the Hooters 500 at the Atlanta Motor Speedway. A young driver and crew chief parent. I'm doing this first. You can scoot. Less than a decade later, Jeff Gordon and Ray Everham. They're announcing the nominees for the NASCAR Hall of Fame. Keep working on that thing, trying to get better. 
No, that's not Abraham. To three championships in four seasons and a series leading 49 wins in the 1990s. Among their triumphs were two Daytona 500s and two Brickyard 400s. Jay Abraham's team leadership and mechanical prowess was his innovation on pit road. Under his direction, the Rainbow Warriors modernized the art of the pit stop. Well, some of the best and most consistent pit stops that you had last Sunday. In 2001, Abraham moved into the position Get of team leader, leading the return of Dodge Get, to Nestor. Get your nose down my dad. His you drivers know better. won 13 times, including Bill Elliott's triumph from the 2002 Brickyard. Bill's in there, isn't he? Yes. The okay. series leading six wins with Casey Kane in 2006. Ray Everham continues to contribute to the sport with Hendrick Motorsports as a consultant for its competition and is remembered for his role in building one of the greatest dynasties in NASCAR history. Ray Everham, huh? Our next newest member has been an ambassador and an advocate for our sport throughout our history. He's done it with his passion and his voice, Ken Squire. All right, Squire made it this year. Born in 1935, Kenley Dean Squire was raised a broadcaster at his family's radio station in Vermont. At only 12 years of age, Ken began his work on air. This is WDEV AM 550, uh, Waterbury and, and Montpelier. Kenley Dean Squire on WDEV with his program each Saturday. Squire's passion for both radio and motorsport spurred him to become co-founder of Motor Racing Network in 1970. But it was on television where Ken's folksy demeanor and articulate wit would shine. There's some news from the pits. Let's go to Ken Squire. With me and Leroy Avro and Leroy, we've got a situation developing here. Serving as an ABC pit reporter, he was part of the very first live flag-to-flag -flag NASCAR broadcast in 1971. Following a move up to the booth with CBS, it wasn't long until Ken's voice was recognized around the country by millions. <laughs> yeah, that was his call. Ken Squire's years of dedication to both the sport and his craft were honored during the 2013 NASCAR Hall of Fame that induction was the NASCAR ceremony. Back then, but get do you something, get out and fight. the creation of the Squire Hall Award for NASCAR yeah, here the one of NASCAR's greatest personalities behind the microphone, was forever immortalized within its spotlight. curious about the last one, but they're having a couple surprises. The newest member has been a fan favorite and a favorite of his peers throughout his career. It started on the West Coast and we had great success in our Camping World Truck Series. Ron Hornaday Jr. Ah, damn it! Ah! That means Miro gets it and Buddy Baker got snubbed. The series by Craftsman is about to get its first official lap of competition in front of a packed house here at Phoenix International Raceway. Buddy isn't in there yet? was a competitor in the inaugural season of the NASCAR Camping World Truck Series and over the next two decades went on to become one of its biggest stars. I'm gonna hear it from Mero. And Greenlight is too. Boasts a series high four championships and 51 wins in the rough, tough, and highly Had to show that, didn't Camping you? World Truck Series. Dominating the record book. Hornaday also sorry. holds all-time marks for top fives, top tens, and laps led in the series. Oh, yeah, Very impressive run for this 33 team. Buddy he leads the 230 huh? point. Buddy, he won't even have to show no. up. And it'll be our point leader after the race. In 2009, 
Hornaday won five consecutive races, an unmatched feat in series history. A four-time winner in the NASCAR Xfinity Series, Hornaday had top five finishes in the final series standings on three different occasions. Dale Earnhardt was credited with discovering Hornaday in the NASCAR Winter Heat Series and giving him his first opportunity in the Camping World Truck Series. Rusty, Hornaday what are you doing? continues Rusty. to help young drivers break into the sport and provide a veteran's advice so they too can pursue their racing dreams. Great class. Congratulations you class to the new members of the NASCAR Couple years ago. Hmm. Class of 2018. Squire, Abraham, Red Byron, and, and Robert Yates. Outstanding contributions to NASCAR. Congratulations also to your family, many of whom are in attendance. What a testament to the tradition and the legacy of our great sport. This concludes today's formal announcement. Media are invited to remain for a series of availabilities that will begin in roughly five minutes. Thank you for your attendance and for watching and listening. A reminder that this weekend's race events at Charlotte Motor Speedway take place uh, beginning tomorrow. Tickets available at NASCAR.com slash tickets or 1-800-455-FANS. The Coca-Cola yeah, 600 advertisement for all the other events. Cup Series How event begins at 6 p.m. on Sunday, live on Fox. Thank you, everyone, and please have a great evening. I get Yates, I get Barron, I get Squire, I kind of get Everham, but Hornady, too early in my book. Robert Yates is a uh, car owner slash engine builder, and Red Byron was the first ever cup champion. But still, Hornady, way too early in my book. I wonder what the vote was. It's unlike anything else. And it just gives me chills. I mean, I can't wait to go congratulate each one of them. <laughs> um, it's just... Uh, it well, you're the nice type. Arm, I expected that. The crown jewel of anyone's racing career. So, were there any surprises, or what were your thoughts? Obviously, you were one of the, the voting members with this. That one, yes. No, I, listen, I think there could be an argument made for everybody. That Damn, he's in. showing his you age, know, ain't he? They all deserve to be in, so... <laughs> Uh, no real He's one of the oldest drivers out there for the longest time. Where have you been? So many yeah. different ways to get here, you know. And then we talked, we spoke about that earlier, and I think this group is, is signifies that, and that's what it should be. This, this, uh, I said it before, but you can impact the sport in a positive way in so many different directions. Ken Squire, he never drove a race car, never, never owned a race car, never drove a race car, and here he is in the Hall of Fame. Uh, as a kid, I remember listening to him on TV, and just that voice meant racing. So. All of these are, are great things. That just made me think, can you imagine what Ken Squire's speech will be like in January? It will be poetic. Poetic and priceless. Cannot wait. There you see the five well, gentlemen, the five individuals in the who were just thing. announced <laughs> as the newest members. The is he even watching or is he watching the news? NASCAR Hall of Fame's ninth <laughs> class. And yeah, such a All right, that I don't want to record myself. Hang on. Your blippers are over here. Hang on. Well, I really like that the real job is you put on celebrity name game again which I've told you not to do at six o'clock <laughs> well this just got interesting they announced who's getting in the NASCAR Hall of Fame in 2018 Robert Yates Red Byron, Ray Eberham, that's got to give me a duck look, Ken Squire, and Ron Hornaday. So, let me get everything set. Uh, legendary Comedy Act. <laughs> Alright. Let me see if Joe knows.
Did you see who got in the Hall of Fame? Because with my luck, he probably... And the damn phone cut off, so now I have to get my charger. I'll be right back. <laughs> Okay, so here is how I feel about the nominees. Robert Yates, I wasn't sure was going to get in, but I kind of expected was a maybe because of the health issues that he's been going through. So I could see the logic of how he got in. Uh, Red Byron makes sense. He's the first ever cup champion. I wasn't sure when he was going to get in. Why does Grandma even have a heater on? It's May. But anyway, I can see the logic as to how he got in. Ephraim, I can kind of see him getting in, but I kind of think it's a bit too early on that account. Well, if that plug ain't working, let me get the other plug then. Yeah. Now turn on. Uh, let's see. Ken Squire, he was one of the people I predicted. I am glad that he got in. But Ron Hornaday... That, that, to me, feels way too early to me for Hornaday to get in. Maybe somewhere between 5 to 10 years down the road, yeah, but way too early. Not for 2018. Uh. So, anyway. Uh. Once again, we're going to be playing this thing. Because for the longest time, uh, Benny Parsons was the one who got snubbed the most. And now it looks like it's Buddy Baker's turn in that division. I don't like that. And there's Joe's text. Let's see what he has to say. <laughs> he actually doesn't know, so now I have to tell him. <laughs> the only person among my group who's going to be happy about Ron Hornaday is getting into the Hall of Fame is my little buddy, Marrow. Uh, Ron Hornaday Jr. is the only driver she only uh, ever had interest in. Minus, to a certain extent, his son, Ron Hornaday III, but... Yeah. But still, I don't think it was the right time to put Hornaday in, but... <laughs> that was fast. <laughs> I saw it and I'm puzzled. <laughs> I don't blame you. I'm kind of puzzled by a couple of those, too. Okay. <laughs> so, anyway, that was basically how I feel about that. I get Yates, so that makes sense to me. I can get Byron, even though he wasn't in one of my five. <laughs> and Joe texted me again. <laughs> Abraham, I could kind of see... But maybe a couple of years would have been better down the road in that aspect. Can Squire was one of the one I had in my five. But, uh... <laughs> Joe says that Davy Allison got snubbed. <laughs> uh, but anyway... I could kind of see... Um... <laughs> I lost track of where I was going. Oh, Yeah. <laughs> I could definitely see Squire getting in because he was the one of the five I had in, but Ron Hornaday? Give me a break. Why? That's way too early in my book. <laughs> that little Yahoo. Hmm. Oh, boy. I kind of wonder how Greenlight's going to feel about this. A, because Earnhardt and Harvick were both owners for vehicles that Hornaday has driven, and B, because of the fact that Greenlight and I, and to a certain extent Meredith, were the only ones who had drivers that we liked in the Hall of Fame, because Greenlight has Dale Earnhardt Sr., and I have Bill Elliott, and Meredith is not as big as an Elliott fan as I was, because she's more connected to anyone named Casey, if you know what I mean, but still. Wow. Well, congrats to, the, to all of the Hall of Fame members. I'm perplexed by a couple of them, mainly Hornaday. I think that Bunny Baker got snubbed. Joe thinks that Davey Allison got snubbed. But maybe next year, I don't know. Just hope it doesn't turn into one of those games again. 
So thank you everyone for watching the live reaction special. Sorry if it was up a little bit after it, but I got a hectic work week coming up. So that was the reason you're seeing it now. So <laughs> there's that. Uh, thank you everyone for watching. This is Ultimate 23 Dragon, and that's my final answer.